Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Angel of Words podcast, where your stories are heard. Don't forget to punch that like button. Share with your peoples. You could also follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And all donations go to Cash App A O W N Y C. Now, today on the Angel of Words podcast, I have a person you know very well from the Sweet Science series and the Sweet Science podcast, Reformed Gang member, Mister Dee Dee Vega. Mister Vega, how are you? today my brother thank you for joining us today on the angel of words podcast i'm good i'm good i'm good my brother thanks for having me back man now of course man i I have to have you here and you know i appreciate your time that you're spending with us and opening up telling us your truth and uh it's a very important truth because your story is a story about vindication validation reformation a lot of stereotypes that people believe that can't be overcome you have overcame and i you know i appreciate you being here now i would like to start off with how you know what drew you what was the allure of uh the gang life Oh, man, I've been asked this question a lot, and I always sit back and I think about it. What really drew me in, you know? And um, if I'm being honest, you know, I was a 15-year-old kid, so if I'm being honest, I could probably say it was like, it was kind of like me being a follower, you know? Yeah. Not so much so following like I really want to be like someone. It's just, you know, at the time when the gang hit my neighborhood, like, you know, all my friends was doing it, and I had no, like, no clue that I was going to be a gangbanger that I had no admiration to become a gangbanger. Yeah. It just like, you know, it just happened. It was like yeah. all my friends was doing it, you know, and then the peer pressure was there. Yo, you going to join when you going to join it? Eventually, you know, I was like, all right, you know what, man? Let me join up, you know? Was it something like you wanted to be part of a brotherhood? You wanted to have like some sense of camaraderie, like be part of something? Is that something that crossed your mind or not really? Not really, man. Okay. Not really. You know, you like, be, if I'm being honest, man, it's like, you know, all right, when it came to my neighborhood, you know, I seen it. I seen it around. I seen slowly a couple of my friends started to join or whatever. And then I was like, you know, I, I, I didn't know anything about gangs, you know, or only what I saw on TV. Okay. You know, I mean, the bloods was, was kind of heavy at that time in the neighborhood, but I wasn't really drawn towards that because, like, they would, they wasn't doing a lot of good shit, you know. Yeah. They, was, they, was, they was doing some foul stuff in okay. the neighborhood, so... I didn't really like what, that direction that they was going in. But okay. then when I seen the guys in my neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, they all started turning crips and whatnot. I'm like, yo, do I really want to join this? Like, is this yeah. something I really want to do? And then, like, my brother did it before me. My little brother, he okay. did it before me. And then he was like, yo, yo, you should join, you should join, you know, you should join. And then all my friends, they was already doing this. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should join. Yeah. But... It's actually, and you joined the Crips, correct? We, we, yeah, okay. yeah, right. I, yeah. I was a former Crip, man. Okay. And like, um, the Democrats of the uh, gang life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was it was it was really an incident that made me say that. All right, I'm now I'm gonna do it. Oh, could you elaborate on that? What happened to you? That like that epiphany moment. All right, so basically, um. As I said, my friends in my neighborhood, they already had joined up. Yeah. And they were they were they was already gangbanging or whatever. And um I was hanging with them, you know? These are my friends. These are guys I grew up with. I was hanging with them, but I wasn't yet affiliated. So I was on two nineteenth and White Plains Road in the Bronx, you know? And I was in front of the pizza shop. It was like around time school let out. So it's a lot of young kids there. You know, kids my age and stuff. A lot of young kids there. Yeah. And I seen some guys from the neighborhood that I know that I grew up with. And they had already joined up, and and they turned bloods. Oh, okay. They was bloods, and I and I know them. You know, I know them. I grew up with them. They mm-hmm. know me. I, some of them I hang in their house. Some, I know their families and everything. And I saw them, and I'm standing there in front of the the uh, pizza shop, and I see a group of them coming up. It's like maybe ten or twelve of them. Oh, they came deep. Yeah, they 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 were just walking the neighborhood though. Yeah. Like they, to my to my knowledge, they were just walking the neighborhood. And when I seen them. They came to they was coming towards me, or whatever. And um, I knew the 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 guy who was leading the pack. I'm not gonna give nobody name, but the, yeah, yeah, the no guy, guy yeah, yeah. the guy who was leading the pack. I I know him and I know him well. Okay. And he came up to me and, and he came. He's like coming towards me. So I'm thinking he coming like as a friendly, you know, because yeah. I know you. Yeah. He's, you don't think he's coming to terrorize you? Or no. Yeah. So so when I so when he approaches me, I put my hand out to give him a pound. You know, I'm like, yo, what's yeah. up? He slaps my hand down. Wow. 
he Not slapped my hand down and I and I look like it, you know, it startled me like yeah. like what the you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. he like, yo, he turned to his boys now, he like, yo, yeah. yo, he crib, he a crab. So I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't even no crib. Like, what yeah. you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And at the same moment, like when those words is coming out my yeah. mouth, this one when, when the bloods was known for cutting people back yeah. then, I hear the box cutters open it. Click, 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 click. So I look, like five of them got box cutters. So I'm like, yo, my back is against the wall. Yeah. Mind you, I'm a 15-year-old kid, yeah. skinny kid, you know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? My back is against the wall. I see these dudes, they got box cutters. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to get out of this. Yeah. Like I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not a crip. Like, yo, yeah. you wildin' yeah. or whatever. So he like, yo, he like, nah, you be with those crips. Ah, yeah. you a crip, whatever, whatever. So luckily, like, 219 and White Plain is one of the, the, the stops on the two train. Okay. And it's a, it's a stop because all the kids from, from Olinville Junior High School, MS-13, they all come out to 219 to go to the pizza shop, the Jamaican shop. So it's like it's a popular area, so it's a lot of – so it always be a lot of police in the – um in the train station. Yeah. So when they when when this whole commotion was going on, I guess the police in the train station heard it. So they came out the train station. When they came out, they was like, break the crowd up. So they broke the crowd up. I went this way. They went that way. But in my head, I'm like, I know what they're going to do. They're going to try to come around the corner and catch me. They're going to try to catch me when I'm going around the corner. So as I'm going around the corner, I'm looking for anything I could defend myself with. A stick, a pipe, anything, yeah. anything I could defend myself with, you know. <laughs> Facts, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a kid at the time. Yeah, I'm, no, I know my heart is racing. Yeah. I'm looking for something. I'm like, man. Yeah, you're panicked. Your, you know what I'm, I'm like, saying? Yo, yeah. can, yo, I need to defend myself, man. And it's like, yo, it's like I had an epiphany moment. Like, like yeah. God was looking over me. Yeah. I looked in his, I look in his yard, and there's a baseball bat leaned up against the gate. That's crazy, man. But peep this, the baseball bat had blue tape. On the end of it, and blue tape all around the handle. I say, "Are oh, the crib guards looking down on me?" <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I grab the bat. Sure enough, like I thought, when I get around the corner, they come running around the corner. I got the bat. You know, I didn't hit nobody, but I got the bat. I'm trying to back them up off me. What's up? What's up? What y'all want to do? Uh, long story short, they back up off me. They run because they don't want to get hit with no bat. They run, so I go back to my neighborhood, and I'm telling all my boys now, like, yo, they ran down on me, yo, they tried to do me dirty, they was about yeah. to cut me, whatever, whatever, and they yeah. like, yo, they like, that's why you need to join up. So it was like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Let's end it. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. This is yeah. what we gonna do. So I say maybe that was in... February 1997, I never forget. It was February 1997. And so I'm like, all right, we're going to join up. So they take me down the block. It's this big yard on my on my block where I hung out at 224 from Bronx. Where this is big yard on the block. And we call it the barnyard because, like, you walk into the walkway and it's like a long walkway. And then on either side is grass and the house is in the back. So it's like a big yard. We call it the barnyard okay. or whatever. So they're like, yo, come in the barnyard. And I remember before I when, when before I got initiated, all my friends used to tell me, "Yo, when you do get initiated, yo, yo, punch the OG. You get respect if you if you if if you just set it off on them, right?" So they like, "Yo, come in the yard." They like, "Come in the yard. We gonna initiate you, right?" So I'm like, "All right." So before we walk in the yard, I clock them. I don't even yeah. give them a chance. I clock them. Right? <laughs> I don't give them a chance to walk in the yard. <laughs> I clock them, boom. Yeah. Right? I clock them, boom. They on me. They jump on me. They jump on me. It's, it's my, my little brother. <laughs> my little brother. This is my, my younger brother. Yeah. He jumps on me. Two of my other friends, I won't say their names. And then my yeah. OG, he, they jump on me. Boom, 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 man. And, and man, we getting it, man. I don't know how long it was. It felt like I was... They, they that, was, I always wonder, like, how long, did, like, the, the beatings must feel like they're lasting for all of eternity, man, when you're, yeah. like, inside that scuffle. Yo, bro, um, it felt, I, I can't tell you how long it was. I'm sure yeah. it was, like, maybe a minute or two. <laughs> yeah. But it felt like I was there for about two or three hours. <laughs> Yo, Yo crazy, man. And, I, and I remember, man, at, yeah. the time I had a, at the time I had a little girlfriend that lived right there. Yeah. And she's watching from the window. Yeah. <laughs> so in my head, I'm like... Don't hit the floor. You can't go down. Yeah. She's watching. Yo, man, they wore me out, though, man. Yeah. 
And that was my. But initiation. did you hit the ground? You never hit the ground. Nah, I never hit the ground. Oh, all right, man. You know, I never hit the ground. There, you know? I wish I would have hit the ground though, because if I hit the ground, I could have curled up and yeah, that's and, a uh, fact. Covered yeah. up with some of those blows. Yeah, use the cement to try to protect yourself. <laughs> that's a fact. Oh man, that's wild. And then you know, so you're, you you know you 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 get initiated, and then over the course of years, then you kind of like start leading the pack. Could you, you know, could you describe that transition, man? And and how you felt like, you know, was it worth, you know, did you feel like it was worth it at the time? I mean, at the time when you're doing it, yeah, yeah. you know, it, you everything feels worth it. It feels like, yo, this is me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. you know, at the time. But as you when you get older, you know, and you get more mature and then you have children and you start thinking about some of the things that you've done and the things you were doing and stuff, you know, you realize that it. It wasn't good. Like it wasn't yeah. good. It's it's excuse me. It wasn't good. Like it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not nothing that I would want my child to go through or, or any of my family members or any kid, period. You know, any kid that that that's considering joining the gang. It's nothing I would want them to go through. Is if I if I could tell any kid out there, I tell them, look, stay far away from it. You know, don't ever join the gang. Stay far away from it. It's it's no pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, you know? Yeah. There's no pot of gold at the end of it. So I, I would strongly encourage kids to, like, stay away from it because it's nothing good going to come out of it, you know? You don't get nothing good out of it. But, but when you but when you join, when you're a kid at the time, you don't you don't know that, you know? Yeah. You're just thinking, I am with my homeboys, you know what I'm saying? But to answer your question, how I transitioned to becoming to, like, a, a leadership role, basically, basically my, 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 my two um, OGs that – brought the, the the gang to my neighborhood or whatever, they both ended up in prison. They both ended up in prison. Uh, both of them was fighting uh, murder charges. Wow. One beat it. The other one ended up getting 17 in life for his. Wow. And these are two separate charges, two separate two separate cases, you were, two you separate charges. you were close charges. to these men? I was close to both of them. Both okay. of them was real close to them. Before I turned before I turned crip, I was close to them. You know, they was my boys okay. or whatever. So, um... And like, yeah, cause when they when they first came over and I got cool with them and I knew they was Crips, but like the gang thing wasn't popular like that, yeah. you know. So I had known them for a while before I had joined up or whatever. But when they caught they when they caught their murder cases or whatever, and they was fighting that or whatever, they was the set was left like with no leadership, you know. And me and me and me and the big homeboy was real close, and he knew he liked the way I moved. You know, because I like at that time I was like a no nonsense dude. You know, like I was I'm 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 a fun dude to be around. I'm cool. You know that, man. Yeah, it's a fact, man. But, you, know, you don't come off as a former uh, you know gang terrorizing leader. You know what I mean? Like, not <laughs> see, but I wasn't a terrorizer. Yeah, though. Right, I wasn't. Cool. That wasn't your style. I wasn't a tyrant. All right, you know. Okay. I wouldn't ask you to do nothing. I wouldn't do myself. Got you. You know, and I went and I wouldn't like use my my status against anybody. Like uh, I'm the leader. You gonna do what I say? That yeah. wasn't me. You know, okay. I treat everybody fair because regardless of what we all men at the end of the day, whether we boys or not, we still men, you know, at the end of the day. Thanks. So I always treated everybody with respect. You know what I'm saying? But there was a point that you're not going to cross. If you're going to be in this lifestyle, you're going to play by the rules and you're going to abide by them or else you're going to get your behind whip if you don't. You no. Know? And that's how and, 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 and he knew I was that type of dude. And he was like, yo, listen, man, I know these dudes ain't going to try to run over you because I know how you are. You solid. So I want you to hold it down okay. while I'm going. So I'm like, yeah, and I took that role and I took it serious, you know. I took it serious. I'm like, yo, if this is what we're going to be, this is what we're going to be. We're not going to be out here half-assing. We're not going to be playing. It's going to be serious. Like, you you join up, you know what this is about. So don't get in this thinking it's a game. It's not a fad. And that's how we lived our life for a long time. Now, what is it about? You know, at that moment, you know, at that time, what were you guys about? Was it like looking for other rival gangs to start trouble? Like, you know, what, you know, did you do stuff for the community? Because I know there's some gangs out there that actually do things for the community. You know what I'm saying? And or they protect old ladies, you know, whatever it is. I mean, was there, you know, what was the purpose behind uh, your set back then? Bro, in all honesty, it was no purpose. We were fifteen year old kids. All right. We were kids. All right. We were let's not get it twisted. We were kids. It was no purpose. Yeah. We didn't have no money to help no community. Yeah. Or nothing. We were just a gang in our yeah. neighborhood 
uh, I guess we felt we were protecting our neighborhood at the time, you know? Yeah. We didn't want rival gangs coming in our neighborhood doing nothing they ain't supposed to be doing, you know? So, in a sense, I guess we, our, our feeling at the time was this is our neighborhood, we protecting our neighborhood. But when you look back at it, when you go back and you realize that you were just terrorizing it. You just didn't let anyone else terrorize it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because we <laughs> we were doing. I mean, we was kids. We we yeah. we didn't have adult mentalities. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't fully comprehend what we was doing. And I mean, we wasn't the worst either. I'm not gonna sit here and yeah. act like this was uh, L. A. or something. Well, I'll be honest with you. No, I never had problems with Crips growing up. I had a lot of problems with Bloods. I'll be honest. Bloods were were more, you know, all about that terrorizing the neighborhood and the communities wave, especially was, where I grew up in Harlem. Most definitely because they were the same way in my neighborhood, too. Yeah. If you were in blood, they would terrorize you. Yeah. And when when we started out, let, let, let it be understood that we were very small. We were in a big set. We were very small. It was maybe 10 of us. Maybe 10. If I could think about it, it was maybe 10 of us. We were very small when we started out, right? So in, the, in, ev in my whole neighborhood was all bloods. We were surrounded on all sides. Like, we from 224th and Bronxwood, right? Mm -hmm. And 225th and White Plains, 220th and Bronxwood, 217th and Bronxwood, 226th and Bronxwood, 227th and Bronxwood, 225th and Paulden, Edenwall. I mean, excuse me, 225th and Laconia, Edenwall. That's Edenwall Projects. All that was blood. We were surrounded by blood, you know? And, and mind you, it's only like 10 of us, and we like... If you would have seen us, you would have thought you was like on a neighborhood in California somewhere because we was like blue flags everywhere, you know? And we, we was like really gangbanging. So when we was out there, we was like, yo, listen, we're small. They're going to try to run over us. So we got to let them know that it's not going to happen. So we did what we had to do. Hey, man. And uh, you did what you had to do, Vega, and then unfortunately... You know, you call a case. Yes. And you ended up going down and you ended up going to prison. So, <clears throat> you know, not only were you, in, you know, in a gang, but you also have been part of the prison system on the Correct. inside, you know. And, you know, what was that process like? Did you go to Rikers first? Did you go to state prison? Was it a more privatized prison? Like, All right. So I could speak on it because the yeah. case is done and sealed. I did yeah. my time for it and everything. So yeah. I could speak on it. I caught a assault one attempt murder charge. Yeah. And that's a, I shot somebody. So basically, I tell you the story of what happened. Yeah. So basically it was me and a friend. We were hanging out, just chilling, regular night. And we used to deal with two friends. Like I dealt with one girl and he dealt with her friend. So they had asked us to come over because their parents wasn't home. At this time, um, eighteen years old. I'm 18. This is two some of 2000. Some of 2000. They had asked us to come over because their parents wasn't home. So we're like, all right, we're going to go over there. Yeah, and want to get it in, you know? You know how that goes. You know how that go. <laughs> so they had asked us to bring some weed and some liquor. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to get high. They wanted to get drunk. You know how that go. Yeah. Regular hood shit. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, I am, and to keep it all honest, I was broke. I ain't had no money. Yeah. So I'm like, yo. Now you were a kid though, you know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> I mean, I was doing my thing back then. Yeah. I was getting a little money and stuff, yeah. but at that particular time I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> I was so on, times was hard and you know, you went to Yeah, I was, I was on one of those uh off moments okay. or whatever. So I was like, yo, I know one of my boys, he sell bud, you know what I'm saying? He'll give me some bud if I ask him for it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he dealt with me like that. So my boy was like, All right, come on, let's go get it. He's like, I get the liquor. Like, I bet. So we go to, now my boy used to be up on, by around, he used to be around 233rd and White Plains Road at the time. He used to be up around that area. So I'm like, all right, let's go up there. So I had my pistol. I had a 38 revolver, right? And I used to carry that with me everywhere. I used to go, I used to carry it with me or whatever. And I was like, yo, it was like a Thursday, I believe. It was like one of them sweep nights. So I was like, yo, I'm going to leave the, um, I'm going to leave the pistol in the house because, you know, police be pulling dudes over at this all the time. So he like, nah, bring it. So I'm like, nah, I'm going to just leave it. He like, nah, bring it, man. I bet. So I bring the pistol with me. 
So we on pedal bikes. We ride up there. We riding, we riding up there or whatever. So when we get up there, I don't see my boy. He's not out there or whatever. He's not out there. And mind you, this is 2000. We don't got cell phones and stuff at that time. Yeah, no, you really got to go out and search for people. You yeah. know what I mean? And ask around to see where they at. So I'm looking for him, and I don't see him. I don't see him out there. So I'm like, yo, man, damn. We at? But we did pick up some liquor. We picked up some liquor and stuff. So I'm like, yo, let's just go to the girl's crib or whatever, you know? So he like, all right, bet. Come on, we going to go. So now when we on our way there, I see this dude. They, it's two dudes, they're on a pedal bike, they're coming towards us. One dude is on the handlebars, the other dude is riding. So they're coming towards us. And as he get closer, I recognize him. It's a dude I know I went to school with, and I know him from the neighborhood. And he's a blood. Okay. So I recognize him. So he sees me, he recognizes me. So we lock eyes, we see each other, but I'm not paying him no mind because like, I, know, like, I know this dude in, in my mind at the time, like, He's a herb. Yeah. He's soft. He's nobody to be worried about. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not paying him no mind. So I keep it moving. I ride right past him. So as I ride past him, my boy that was with me, he keeps looking back. Keeps looking back. So I say, yo, what's up, man? He said, yo, you know them dudes? I said, yeah, I know him. He ain't nobody, man. Yeah. So he said, yo, I think it's a problem because they coming back. So oh, when I look sure. back, they coming my way now. And they like, yo, what's popping? So in my head, I'm like, yo, if I got to shoot these dudes, yeah. I don't want to do it on White Plains Road. Yeah, no, it's a pretty busy street, you know, out there so, in the Bronx. So let me get off of White Plains Road. So mm -hmm. I turned down by Burger King. And mind you, what I didn't mention is I'm already drunk before we went there, before we left the place because we was drinking yeah. when, the girls called, when the girls told us to come over. We was already drinking. So I'm drunk. Um, so I turn, on, I turn down by Burger King. So when I get down the block, I go, I, f I don't know the name of the block, but it's like a little cut block. So I turn down there because in my head, I'm like, if I got to do something to one of these dudes or whatever, or both of them, I don't want to be in the open. So I turn down the block, turn down the block, they, they follow me. So now he come up to me, he say, yo, what's popping? So I said, what's cracking? So I say, yo, what you want to do, man? Like, what you, what you running up on me for? Is it a problem or something? So he like, yo, y'all crabs don't belong up here, this, that, that, and the third. Now, mind you, what I ain't tell you is that the same kid I had had a little incident with him when we was in, like, junior high school. It was like yeah. before either one of us was in a gang. I had had an incident with him, so I'm guessing he still was holding a grudge. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so he, like, so he started popping off at the mouth. He's popping off at the mouth, but I'm drunk. I'm trying to get to the buns. I'm yeah. not, I don't got time yeah. for this, You man. have a goal in mind, and that's yeah, not it. Yeah, I don't it. have time for this. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're wasting my time. Wow. I already know you're not like that. You're wasting yeah. my time. So I'm, so I'm there. I'm like, yo, man. Like, I'm like, yo, what, what do you want to do? Like, you want to fight or something? Yeah. So he like, I don't fight. I shoot. Ooh. And he reached for his waist. But the whole time, I already had my pistol drawn, and he yeah. didn't see it. My shirt was over it. Because yeah. I'm on my bike, and I got yeah. my pistol drawn already the whole time. So he said, I don't fight. I shoot. And he reached for his waist. So when he reached for his waist, I shot him. Yeah. Boom. I shot him. He jumps. He runs. He go, he take off the run. And he take off the run. I aim at him. I shoot again. He falls between the cars. He falls between the cars. I shoot him again. And then I see his friend running. So I shoot at his friend. But I never hit him. I missed him. So we left. We left the scene. Boom. We left the scene. Never made it to the girls. Went back, like, fuck, Dang. man. I'm like, man, now now I'm like, yo, I think I just killed this dude. I'm like, damn, I hope nobody didn't see me. How I'm not yeah. trying to go to jail for the rest of yeah, my life. Facts. I'm like, but I'm 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 kind of angry because that I didn't come out the house for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I mean, charge it to the game is part of the game, yeah. but that's not what I came out the house for. Yeah. I had a goal in mind when I came out the yeah. house. You know, and I'm like, yo, man. You wasn't looking ain't... for trouble when you left your crib. No, I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't even going to bring the pistol with me. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm like, oh, man, man, this dude, man, he just made me kill him or whatever, whatever. So I thought I killed him or whatever. But so he like, probably would have murdered you. He never had a gun. He tried to bluff me. Oh, no. He never had a gun. Damn. He tried to bluff me. So I find out like a day or two later that he, that he actually didn't die. He survived yeah. or whatever. And then I find out that he's cooperating with the police. Okay. He's cooperating. He gave my name up or whatever, whatever. So now they're looking for me. So 
I'm on the run for like two months. <laughs> yeah. For like two months, I'm on the run, but I'm not really on the run because I'm still living in my house. Yeah. I'm not hiding. Yeah. I just didn't turn myself in. Yeah. I heard they came looking for me. I didn't turn myself in, but they 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 go in the areas they know that I frequent. They looking for me and stuff like that. But I'm like, yo, they can catch me when you can. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna turn myself in. Yeah. So eventually they caught me. They caught me. They brought me in. Showed me all the paperwork. You know, I went to Rikers Island first. So I was on Rikers Island for maybe a year and a half. Awaiting trial and stuff like that. Awaiting trial. Man. Okay. And like, what's up with that place, man? Like, I had a friend who was a blood who uh, died in that place. You know, he, he was murdered by his own gang members, his own, you know, family, if you will, in jail. What's up with that jail, man? It, there's, some people say it's worse than when you go to federal or state prison. Oh, man. Rikers Island is not no place you want to be. Yeah. Let me say that. It's not no place you want to be because it's a doggy dog world. Like, you're going to either be a wolf or you're going to be a sheep. Yeah, like in its purest form. You in know? its purest form. Yeah. You're going to either, you're gonna either uh, show your fangs or you're going to tuck your tail. Mm. It's just one of the two. And me, I got too much pride to let anybody do anything to me, you know? So I already knew when I hit Rikers Island that I was going to have to be a wolf automatically. And I had a rough time, as you can imagine. Wow. I had a rough time. Being a crip on Rikers Island is not fun. Yeah, I mean, I could imagine, man. It's not numbered by a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not one of those guys that's going to go in and and, uh, and not claim. Yeah. And, and, and cripping, we call it low riding. Yeah. I'm not going to go in there and low ride. Okay. I'm not going to not claim what I am. Yeah. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to tell you what I am. Yeah. And besides, when I went in there, uh, it was no denying what I was anyway, because at that time I used to emulate West Coast artists. Okay. Because I thought at that time I felt like if you was a crip, you had to look like a crip. Yeah. And my idea of a crip then was Snoop Dogg, okay. Daz Corrupt. Okay, gotcha. The East Siders, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, so... That was how I, I thought I was supposed to look yeah. being a crip. So I wore the cornrows. Yeah, you had the dickies and all that stuff. Long cornrows, wow. the flannel shirts, yeah. the dicky pants, yeah. the uh the 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 Chuck Taylors, you know, I dressed like a crip. Oh, so you emulated that swag entirely. I emulated that swag right, entirely. Gotcha. I had so when I got arrested, I had a a, a blue flannel button up shirt mm -hmm. on. I had some blue dicky pants on. I had some Chuck Taylors on, and I had a lumberjack, blue and black lumberjack belt. Yeah. So it was like no denying what I was when I got there. Yeah. So when I see when they see me and I got in the pins, excuse me, when I got in the pins, they already knew what I was. I see all of them congregating in the corner. It's like. 20 people in the pen with me. <laughs> they all congregating in the corner. They all talking. I'm like, yeah, they're going to try something. No, you're going to try something. Just prepare yourself. Put your back against the wall. Put your back against the wall and fight off as many as you can before it go down. <laughs> wow. And is that how you got that scar on your head? Nah, nah, nah. Okay. This is a dirt bike accident. Oh, okay. I crashed in a dirt bike. I never got cut in jail. Okay. I never got cut in jail. Well, thankfully. Thank God, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. They, they really kicked my ass that day. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man, that must have felt, felt like another eternity, man. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, they 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 really did a number on me that day, man. They they kicked my ass, man. But I fought until yeah. I couldn't swing my fist no more. Yeah. But what can you do when and it's the like twenty people? The CEO's nowhere to be found, huh? The CEO's nowhere to be found. But you want to know the funny thing is? What's the funny thing, man? Hear the funny part, right? <laughs> yeah. So they kicked my ass, man, what felt like 20 minutes, right? <laughs> it might have been like five. But yeah. they kicked my ass for what felt like 20 minutes, right? And then the COs finally show up, right? And I think this might be the first time I was happy to see police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're hilarious. I think this might be the first time. Woo! Yeah. Get up out of here, man. <laughs> right? So when the police came, they like, they see me. My, my, my shirt is all ripped up. My hair's all fucked up, right? They see me. I'm all beat up, breathing hard. They like, what happened to you? You know, so you know, you can't snitch. You gotta hold it down. You yeah. can't snitch. That's number one rule, no snitching. Yeah. So they like, what happened to you? I'm like, I don't know. They like, what you mean you don't know? I'm like, I was asleep, I don't know. They like, yo, so you don't know they like, obviously you got your ass kicked. So you don't know who did? I'm like, I don't know, man. I was asleep. I don't know who hit me. So it's like, oh, you want to keep it real? You don't want to snitch. They like stay in there with them. Locked the door and left. 
Nah. Lock the door and left. And and, and I look over in the corner, and they like this. <laughs> Rubbing their knuckles. They ready for round two. I'm like, oh, shit, man. Yeah. Round two. They jumped me again. Oh, no. <laughs> God, that's hell, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Round two, they jumped me again, man. You a tough son of a bitch, man. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> you took two ass whippings in the course of an hour. That's Yo. crazy. But multiple dudes. Damn, that's crazy. Yo, they they jumped me again. But yo, the, the funny part is, right, in that in that incident right there, yeah. after they jumped me, they start clowning one of their own lounge. Like they're like, yo, blood, yo, you soft. You always wanna fight when when it's all of us, you wanna jump people, you don't never wanna shoot the fair one. Uh uh-uh, uh, you were scared to go and mar for a low when Pokemon was in there. That was some other dude that was yeah. terrorizing the island. Okay. People who was on the island that time know who I'm talking about. Okay. So they like, yo, you were scared to go in there when Pokemon was in there? And he was a Lion King Pokemon. Okay. They like, you were scared to go in there when he was in there? Uh, uh, so he like, yo, I ain't pussy, blood, I'm tough. Uh, uh, he talking all this. So they look at me and they say, yo, fight the hard back, one D then. Give him the fair one. If you ain't scared, give the hard back the fair one. Yeah. So they look at me, I'm beat up, bro. Like, they yeah. just, they, I, I got jumped twice. Yeah. I, I barely can stand up. Yeah. They look at me. They're like, yo, you want to fight him? In my mind, I'm like, hell no, nigga. I'm fucked up. <laughs> but my pride, but my pride yeah. is telling me somebody got to get their ass kicked for what they yeah. just did to you. Yeah. So I gathered all the energy yeah, I can muster like in my wind, body. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, hell yeah, I want to fight him. What's yeah. up? Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to fight. Come on. So they're like, all right. I, but they gave me what the, the, the prison sneakers what we used to call the Patakis back then. Okay. There was the orange-looking, Bruce Lee-looking yeah. sleeves. So I had those on. So I'm like, yo, everybody, because when you come in, they take your sneakers. Everybody had on their sneakers, though. So I'm like, yo, like, yo, one of y'all, let me hold a pair of sneakers. So one of the blood dudes was like, yo, what size you wear? So I'm like, yo, I'm a nine and a half, ten. So he had some, some, some beef and brocks on, some yeah. Timberlands, some beef and brocks. On my New Yorkers, you know what I'm talking about. This is crazy, because it's like, yo, like, you're going from like such a primitive situation, and then there's some sort of civility. Like, yo, here, yeah. <laughs> like this is nuts, bro. Like, just the thought process, like that's going on here, man. It's crazy. Yeah. So the dude, yeah. the dude, give me his beef and brocks. I okay, put the, yeah, I put so. the beef and brocks on. Yeah. I tie him up real tight. Whatever. I tie him up real tight. I'm, I'm hurting though. You know, they just yeah. beat, they just beat the hell out of me. I'm hurting, but I'm like, yo. I gotta hurt this dude, man. I gotta make an example to let these dudes know, like what time I'm not is. the one. Yeah. Like I'm not the one. So in my head, I'm like, yo, yo, you gotta really finish this dude, man. So we square up in the middle of the cell. We square up. We square up. So like I'm like I'm like coming towards him. I got my hands up. I'm like coming towards him, but he keep backing up. So I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, stop backing up, nigga. What's up? Let's go. Yeah. Stop backing up, bro. He like, he like, he looked nervous. Like his face, he looked nervous. And he's bigger than me. He's bigger than me. He, uh, I'm only five nine and a half, five ten, and and, and this dude was like six two. He's bigger than me. And mind you, but we kids at the time. I'm only yeah. eighteen. Like I'm eighteen. He probably eighteen too. Yeah. But he's a big dude, and he yeah. got a little weight on him. So I'm like, he looked mad scared. So he rushes me real fast. He rushed me, pushed me into the sink. He, uh, my back hit the sink, and he starts swinging real wild. Boom, boom, boom. He pounding on me. I'm, I'm like. I'm taking all these hits. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yo. I'm like, shit, man. I can't get a punch in. Like, yeah. this dude's wicked crazy. Yeah. So now they all hyping him. Yeah, fuck him up, blood. Yeah, beat that crab up. Yeah, yeah. bro. Right? And, and now and now he's feeling himself. He got a little confidence going. He like, he like, yeah, hard back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He's talking bad shit. But he's not hit. None of them is catching my face because I'm yeah. blocking everything. Yeah. Right? So I'm blocking everything. I'm trying to look for an opening to get in there. I'm trying to look for an opening. So... Right when he like cocked back, I gave him like a little push. I pushed him off me to give me like a little space between me yeah, and him. Yeah, no distance. So when I give when I push him, I, I give him I give him the right hook from hell. Right, boom! I hit him. Boom! When I hit him, he fall on my chest. He's knocked out. Sleep. Sleeping. Sleep. Wow. Swear to my kids. One hit a quitter. You hit him One with hit. the fucking maceta. Gee, that's crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> he like this on my chest, sleep, right? Bro, and you just finished taking two ass whoopings, bro. And you bro. had enough energy to hit him with a haymaker and shut him down. One hit, boom, I, yeah. I put him down. He on my chest like this, sleep, right? So I push him on the floor. Yeah. I push him off my chest, he land on the floor. Yeah. He like in doggy style on, yeah. the, on the floor. Yeah. So I, I climb on the nigga back like a horse yeah. and just start working him. Beep, yeah. Boom, boom. I'm, and now while I'm beating him, I'm talking mad shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking mad shit. I'm like, yeah, creep up, nigga. Bronxwood. Yeah. I'm from Bronxwood, nigga. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah. So I'm washing him, right? Yeah. I'm washing him now. And now I'm hyped because yeah. I'm finally winning. Like, <laughs> I, just took, I just took two L's. I just took two L's. So yeah. I'm finally winning. So I'm in my zone now. I'm hyped. And I'm like, yeah, Bronxwood. And, and, and as I'm in my zone, all I feel is crack from the side. Pow. I feel the hit. Boom. Next thing I know, I'm in the Matrix. His hands and feet everywhere. Oh, God, again? They jump me, they jump me again because oh, I'm winning. no. <laughs> what a mess, bro. They jump me again. Now they hear the CEOs coming. The CEOs finally come. Yeah. come the CEOs finally come back. Everybody everybody get jump up. Everybody jump up, act like nothing's going on. Yeah. I'm in the corner like, all wore out. So now the CEOs is finally like, man, come on, get your ass out that cell. Yeah. Or whatever. So they open the cell. So as I'm walking out the cell, the dude says, Yo, bro, wait, let me get my boots. I said, you dead. He's his mind now. You dead. I dead him on the boots. <laughs> dead on the boots. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you got some boots out of it. You know, some nice beef and rocks, I mean, bro. It's it's say, fine. He said, I'm going to kill you all back. Yeah. Bitch, I see you. I'm going to kill you. Whatever. I said, yeah, all right, man. Yeah. Left out with the boots. I got my ass kicked behind them boots, too, okay. man. Like three times. Really? Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> man. Bro, so then you, so then you know you 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 get sent to, uh, what was it federal or state prison? They sent you state up state prison. All right, so you went over uh, upstate to New York or Jersey? I, where, where they send no, you New York, New York. Okay. I, um, I took a plea deal. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to him about that because I remember you talking to me in the past about cats that take plea deals when they really shouldn't be taking plea deals because they may have a strong case. Like, could you talk about the prison system in that way in the legal aid society and, like, how tough it is, you know, to really get good representation when you could actually be the case, but you take a plea deal because you don't want to risk you putting your life on the line, you know? Yeah, basically, so, like, um, you know, I was 18 years old. I didn't have no money. You know, I didn't have no money. Whatever little money I made on the streets before going to jail, it was no savings, nothing like that. So it was no law no money for lawyers. You know, my family's not rich. You know, my family struggle like everybody else's family. They go to work, they get paid, and they pay their bills. So they didn't have any money to spare, you know. So I couldn't afford a, a, a paid attorney. So I had to go to court with a legal aid. Now, in my case... I feel like if I had a paid lawyer, I could have beaten the case. I was guilty. Let's not get it twisted. Yeah. I was guilty for it. I did shoot him or whatever. But when we got the paperwork back, when we got the, the motion of discovery, what it's called, when they, they give you all the evidence that the police and the district attorney have against you, they gave me back my motion of discovery. It was so many inconsistencies in my paperwork that if I had a paid lawyer... I would have been able to beat that case because one of the biggest cons the the one of the biggest uh problems was in the paperwork in his toxicology report he had marijuana, cocaine, ecstasy and alcohol in his system. Mm. So he was drunk and triple high. Yeah. You know? And he had changed his story like six or seven times. So Oh wow. Yeah, like literally. Yeah. Like, literally, he had, like, six or seven yeah, different stories. you have stories. a paid lawyer, you're getting off easy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because nothing. my paid lawyer would have thought that he don't know what happened to him. He mm -hmm. was too high. He was too under the influence to yeah. even realize that it was you. You know. Yeah. What about the gun charge? Did you get a gun charge for that or what? Did they, were they able to find the weapon in that case? Or? They charge you with a gun, but they never found the weapon. Okay, so, I mean, you could have beat that, too. You, know? you do get charged with the yeah. gun. They do put that as one of your counts. Yeah. But they never found the weapon. They, they I got rid of it, basically. Yeah. After the whole incident, I got rid of it. You know, I'm not gonna keep that with me. Yeah. So I got rid of it. So they never found it. They never found the actual weapon, but they did charge me for the weapon because mm -hmm. the firearm was used in yeah. the commission of a crime. Yeah. So, excuse me. So they charge you for the weapon, but they never found it. So, like going back and forth to court, you know, I thought I honestly thought that I would be able to beat the case. At first, you know, I started to go to the law library myself, and I started to pull up cases, 
similar to mines and things like that to figure out how to beat it because I knew that the legal aid wasn't going to fight for me the way I was going to fight for myself. And everything that I presented to the legal aid, she wouldn't even use it. You know, and I'm like, look, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm showing her like, like you're making, you're building her case for her, and she and just has no interest, no interest. That's a problem, man. That's because a they, big work problem. The, they work with, they work with the district they, attorney. I know, and they're not. Su- I mean, they're two separate entities. Like one yeah. is to defend you, and the other one's to prosecute you. That is a humongous issue. That's one of my biggest issues with the legal system, mm-hmm. man. Like, who does the legal aid work for? Like, you're supposed to be out here defending people and trying to make sure that you know, if you have a case that you can make, that you make the proper case and you're and you're giving this woman this information and she's doing nothing with it that must have been so frustrating yeah it was it was it was very frustrating because like you know they don't allow you to get up and speak for yourself in court and then they don't advise that you represent yourself in court anyway you know because i'm not a lawyer there's a lot of things that i don't know about the law you Mm -hmm. know so they don't advise you even though i'm going through these these cases in law library and i'm finding cases similar to mine's in and I'm finding inconsistencies in the story and I'm finding and all this stuff, which I have a strong case. If I had a, a, a capable lawyer, a paid attorney that would have been able to fight for me, but this attorney wasn't fighting for me. So mm. so now I'm now I'm given two options, cop out or go to trial. And now if I go to trial and I blow, I could get 17 years to life. That's a maximum for my, my charge. Mm-hmm. I get 17 years to life. And the plea was right. for what, five years? And the plea was for four years. Four years. The plea was for four years. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, what should I do here? Right? But when it but mind you, the plea was four years after a year and a half. When it first started out, the plea was thirteen years. Actually, excuse me, the plea was fifteen years. They was like, yo, we got a plea deal for you, fifteen years. I'm like, yo, how stupid do you think I am? Yeah, I know. Like, on, I man. mean, I I, I know uh, uh, I ain't no lawyer, but I know that if I blow trial, I get seventeen years. Yeah. So why would I take fifteen? Yeah. You know. So then it went from offering me fifteen to offer me thirteen. I said no. Then it went to twelve. I said no. Then it went down to ten. Still, no, I'm not taking 10 years. But don't you find that a little bit odd? Because if they have such a strong case, why they keep lowering the years down? You know what I'm saying? And that's why I wasn't taking anything because yeah. I said I'm a, they keep going lower and I'm going to get them as low as possible. Yeah. Because I knew that it was a bullshit case yeah. and they knew that it was a bullshit case or whatever. So I said I'm going to just keep bluffing them until I get the number that I think I'll, I'm able to do. Yeah. You know? Who wants to do 10 years in prison? Nobody. Now? You know? So... It went on for a year and a half, and then like 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 one of my final court dates, my lawyer had told me like, "Yo, listen, the final offer is seven years. If you don't take it, we're going to trial." And that's it. They're not going no lower. Seven years, you take it or you go to trial. Mm. So I said, "Well, let's go to trial." Wow. I said, "Well, let's go to trial. I'm not taking it." Yeah. I said, "I think I got a strong case in trial." Yeah. So. She was like, no, you don't. Like, the victim is coming to court saying that you shot him. He comes to every court day with his mother saying that you shot him. You have no case. I said, I have a case. His father wrote a statement and said that I didn't do it. And they closed the case. Because what I didn't tell you was when I, when I shot him, he, him and his mother at the, at the hospital fingered me. And they said that I did it. His father was a former street dude. So his father, like, stick to the code a little bit, no snitching. Yeah. And on top of that, his father felt like he couldn't afford to move his family out of the neighborhood, so he didn't want no repercussions coming back to his family. So he told them that it wasn't me, and they closed the case, and he said he don't want his son to, to, to testify. So they closed the case at C-13, uncooperative complainants or whatever. But then his mother wouldn't let it go. So his mother went back in there to the precinct and told him, no, it was me, and they want to— press charges and then that's how the case came about but that was in my paperwork mm. that his father said it wasn't me yeah. so that was another there's strong a ton point. of inconsistencies in your Ex- case my exactly man. god lord that's so, horrible that you how many years did you do four i did four and a half oh that's horrible man. i ended up doing four and a half and yeah like um so it was a lot of inconsistencies and i knew yeah. it was a lot of inconsistencies and i was pointing this out to my 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 legal aid but she wasn't doing nothing for me. And like even yeah. when and I end up firing that legal aid too. And I got an eighteen B lawyer. And they say eighteen B's are supposed to be like better than legal aids because yeah. 
Because 18 B's is I never like, heard of 18 B. What is that? 18 B's are like lawyers that uh, want to start, like they want to go private. They want to start a law firm. So they supposedly, but, oh, they, okay. but they're hired by sense. the state. Okay. But they're hired by the state to uh, represent you. So supposedly they fight a little harder for you. Yeah, because they want to make a name for themselves, I guess. Yes. And um, when I got the 18B lawyer, at first it seemed like th- this person was going to help me. You know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got a good lawyer now. I might uh, get off or whatever. But real quick, he he fell in line mm-hmm. with the DA. He fell in line. Yeah. He started trying to convince me to take time yeah, or whatever. And he was that's the one who was actually trying to convince me to take the seven years. And I'm like, I'm not taking seven years. Like, I'm not. Or whatever. I know I got all these inconsistencies. Let's go to court. Let's go to trial. So finally, there fucking was, the United States legal justice system is a yeah, fucking disaster, bro. It's a With big all disaster. Due respect, you know, I love this. My country. Everybody knows that. Ride or die, America. But goddamn, that's some fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. not saying that what you did was right, but you also what you did was you were kind of coerced into doing that. If you yeah. think somebody's gonna draw a weapon on you and you have a weapon on you, I mean, you're gonna draw the weapon and probably use it you know what i'm saying definitely bro let me let me let me let me take i'm gonna get back to the to the legal stuff yeah but i just want to throw this in there real quick yeah even though we was gangbanging bro mm-hmm. even though we was gangbanging we weren't just out shooting beating people up stabbing cutting and doing shit just to do it for yeah. no reason you know yeah. we 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 didn't what we call color bang we didn't just bang on you because you was the opposite uh, set, you know what I'm saying? You was a, you was the rival. We didn't just bang just to be banging. That wasn't never us, you know. We chill, we do what we do, you know what I'm saying? And um, but if you brought drama our way, we was gonna address you accordingly, gotcha. you know. So I say that to say that I'm not out there just shooting people just to shoot people just because yeah. you have on red. Yeah, that wasn't ever me. I'm not yeah. just gonna go shoot you or beat you up or do just because you you your blood. That was never me. I got plenty of blood friends i got plenty of friends that's, that's that's blood like i got dudes that i call family that's blood you know what i'm saying and there's never been an issue with these dudes or whatever and none of their homies it's just the ones that got out of line that had to get put back in place you know what i'm saying when they when they did what they did so again i say that to say i'm, I'm not no serial killer i'm not just out there shooting people just to shoot yeah. people. you dig what i'm saying so when I'm going to court and I'm facing this charge now, I'm kind of pissed off because I'm like, you provoked me and now you're telling. Yeah. Like, you you provoked me. Like, yeah. we could have been going our merry way that night. Yeah. I didn't come bothering you. Yeah. I didn't come looking for you. Yeah. You know, you provoked me. You came to me. You bluffed me. You you fronted like you had a gun. And I had mines and I did what I did. And now that... And now you playing this victim, and now your mother's playing this victim, and now every time I go to court, they're painting me out to be like this monster. They're like, oh, he shot this guy, and uh, he shot him when he was down, and then he shot at the other guy. Yeah, I shot at the other guy. He seen my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I I'm, I wasn't out there just looking to, to, to harm nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And you provoked it. So deal with what came next. Yeah. Be a man. If you really felt some strongly way about it, you should have handled it in the street, you know. Well, he's and a child. Obviously, his mother's running his show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's what that I, was yeah, more than I mean, we was all we was all kids, man. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not glorifying this, and I'm not and I'm not acting like this is something cool, yeah, or nothing like that. And I and I and I do but wish the thing I, is you should reap what you sow, like you, yeah, you know man. I mean? I you take pro- accountability, exactly. man. You know Be what you yeah. You know what you did. Like you provoked me. You know what you did. Mm-hmm. I didn't provoke you. Mm-hmm. You provoked me. I would if you would have left me alone that day. Yeah. I would have went and seen. You would have made shorty. love to that beautiful girl. You know, I would have went and seen short. <laughs> I'd have been my young self and yeah, did what I do. Uh, and have Reed, fun. You know, you <laughs> have fun. I was I wasn't thinking about you. I didn't leave the house with the intention to shoot nobody. Yeah. You know? And wow. it happened. But back to the case, right? So now from saying what I'm saying, you know, I'm in court and I'm like, I don't want to take seven years because this punk dude started this, man. Like, like, yeah. why should I do seven, ten years? And, and, and you provoked me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you making me look like I'm some type of monster, like yeah. like I just shot you for no reason yeah. or whatever. So long story short, I'm like, we're going to trial. So when the day comes for me to pick out my jurors, I'm supposed to do the jury selection. The day comes, my lawyer comes to see me. While I'm in the pens, he comes to the pens, he brings me to the room. So we have a lawyer client visit, and, and he tells me, yo, listen, I just left the DA chambers. And they're willing to make this last offer. 
if you don't take it, then they're definitely going to go to trial. And he looks at me and says, and you're going to lose. So I said, what's the offer? He says, five years. I said, tell him four years, and I'll take it right now. I said, but let me speak to my mom first. Let me make a phone call. Yeah. So he said, all right, make a phone call. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to see if they accept the four years. Yeah. He said, all right. I go in there. I call my mom. I go to the phones. I call my mom. I tell my mom, Ma, look, they want to give me four years. What you think? And she was like, just take the four years. She's like, take the four years. You already got a year and a half in. You're going to do like two and a half more years and you'll be home. Yeah. Like, just take the four years. So that years. stuff does count as time served while you're yeah, in Yeah, it's time served. Oh, okay. So I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I'll take the four years or whatever. So when the lawyer came back, he's like, look, they're going to get, they, they accepted the four years. I said, all right, let's. Let's do it. So we went in there. When you when you cop out, you gotta admit to your crime in front of the judge. Mm. You gotta admit to your crime. So you gotta tell them exactly what you did. So they said, "What did you do uh, on the night of such and such? I pulled out a pistol and I shot such and such." Yeah. Why did you do it? You no, know, I'm like, I don't remember exactly what I told them, but I told them something like, "Oh, it was a misunderstanding. We had a misunderstanding. I shot him." What did you use? Thirty eight revolver. Okay, you sentenced to uh four years and then you come back later for a sentencing date where they sentence you. So I come back later, I get a sentencing date. Once I get a sentencing date, they move me. I was in building C seventy four on Rikers Island, C seventy three when I copped out. When I got sentenced, they moved me back to C seventy four. Cause I had turned an adult while I was in um but I was on Rikers Island, Island, so yeah. they moved me. When I first got there, I was in C-74, and then I turned into Dell a year later, and they moved me to C-73. So when I copped out, they sent me back to C-74, waiting to go up north. And when I went up north, that's a whole nother experience. <laughs> Yo, that must have been crazy. I hear the food is better up north. <laughs> Let's talk about the food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, it's better than Rikers Island, but it ain't good. It's better than Rikers Island, but it ain't good, man. But you were telling me there was like a whole shot. No, this is not bad. <laughs> nah, because because you know you know what is better. You 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 can cook your own food. Oh, okay. So when you're able to cook your own food, mm-hmm. yeah, it's way better. Yeah. But um, prison food, the state food, no, yeah. that sucks too. Okay. But uh, cooking your own food, yeah, because like when I first got like when I was on Rikers Island. Your bed is a steel frame, right? And a thin mattress. So imagine sleeping on that for a year and a half. Oh God, your back is gonna be crazy. A thin a thin mattress that you could you could punch it and feel the ground. That's how thin it is. And it's a, a a steel frame, a thick steel frame, right? So when I got up when I got up north, I got to Ulster County. That's a uh a processing facility where you get processed before you go to your jail that you're going to go do your time at. So when I get to Ulster County or whatever, they uh they bring me to the dorm. And when they bring me to the dorm and they tell me, oh, this is your cubicle right here. This is, this is where you're going to be sleeping. So when I get to the cubicle, it's a little cubicle, not that big. Yeah. It's a little cubicle. You got your bed right here, big locker right here, and a little chair, right? So when I get to the cubicle, I go put my stuff on it. I put my stuff on the bed. And when I put my stuff on the bed, it did like a little bounce. It did like a, hold on. It bounced? Hold on. I touched the bed. It got springs. Ooh. <laughs> I, I said, I said, oh, springs? Hold on. Take the stuff off the bed. I lay in the yeah. bed. Man, when I touched the bed, man, I slept like I ain't never sleep before, man. Wow, that's such Bro. a crazy story. I didn't know that one. <laughs> my boy was like, my boy was like, yo, yeah. get up. We go up to the yard. Come yeah. to the yard. I'm like, nah, bro. Let me just sleep, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sleeping on a, on this hard mattress yeah. in a steel frame for a year and a half, I finally get a bed with like with some springs in it. Like Yo, it felt like heaven, bro. Wow. Yo, I think I slept for like three days, bro. It felt like memory foam, you know? <laughs> I think I face. slept for like three days, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. But Go ahead. When I, but when I got there, though, you know what's so funny, right? Because I had this image of what prison was. Because you see, Rikers Island is jail. Mm-hmm. 
upstate is prison. So I had this image of what prison was when I was uh, on Rikers Island. Even when I was in the street, I had this image. And the image I had is, you know, when you see on movies, you see a long line of cells, everybody on the gates, making a bunch of noise and big diesel prisoners and yeah. grimy looking dudes and shit. And like, and like, you know, I'm nervous going up. It's my first time I'm nervous. I'm like, oh man, I don't know what to expect. And I fell asleep on the bus ride up because Oster, I believe, is like three hours from, from, from New York City. So I fall asleep on the way up. And when, and, and when we got there, the guy that I was shackled to, he tapped me, yo, bro, we here, get up. So I wake up, I open my eyes. I see these picturette mountain view in the background. I said, man, this looks beautiful. <laughs> There's these mountains, <laughs> these strange. trees. Such a nice scenic view, you know? <laughs> yeah, a scenic view, right? <laughs> and then I see the, the prison itself, and it's like a big fence going around the whole prison. And then it's like the dorms look like college dorms. So I'm like, when I get in there, everything is clean, is bright. It's lit, it's bright. I smell fresh bread when I get off the bus. I'm like, this is prison? Like, <laughs> this is up north? This is yeah. nothing what I thought. I'm like, yeah. hey, man, this is soft. I'm going to be all right, man. So when I get in there, and I, I get in there, I'm like, I see in there, I'm seeing everybody. I'm just watching the scene, man. Everybody just doing their own thing, you know, minding their business, coming and going, you know. And I'm like, I, I could do my time. This ain't about nothing. I could do my time. Or whatever. And, and also, I didn't see nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Or whatever. Excuse you me. were telling me, too, that, you know, that that, that stereotype of, like, uh, a, a sodomy everywhere is not really something that's that happens at all, you were telling me. Those stereotypes are from the 70s and the 80s and things like that, where, where dudes was getting raped on... Rikers Island and raped up north and things like that. Those yeah. those type of things happen in the in the in the in the seventies and the eighties and stuff like that. I would imagine maybe in the early nineties. I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah. But when I went up, that type of stuff wasn't happening. If you even thought about trying to rape somebody, you out of there. You out of there. They're gonna pack you up real quick. And I ain't talking about police. Police yeah. ain't packing you up. Inmates gonna get you up out of there. Oh wow! Ain't none of that going on no more. You're not gonna rape nobody. You're not gonna treat no next man like he a helpless female. Yeah. You're not gonna do it. They're gonna pack you up real quick. You might get stabbed, cut, anything. So it's not happening. And and then on top of that, it's like you know, you got the you got the uh, you got the guys up there, homosexuals. You know that's that's dealing with whoever they want to deal with, giving it up. So those dudes who are, who are into that type of stuff. They don't. Um. They don't have to take it no more. Yeah. Th- yeah. You don't have to take. <laughs> they don't it. have you, you to can ask for it now. You know? it's, it's there for them. If, <laughs> yeah. that's, if that's your thing, it's there for you. Yeah. You know. So it, so you don't see a lot of that going on no more. I had those type of stereotypes too when I was up north. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was on Rikers Island, when I when I copped out, I told you I was in C seventy three. I was in um one of the lower dorms. I can't remember the exact dorm, but one of the lower dorms, all the way in the back on the dorm side. And I and I used to sleep by this. This, this this brother, I forget his name, he was an older gentleman, maybe at the time I'm like 19, he's like in his 50s or something. And former former crackhead or whatever, but cool dude, cool dude. And he was schooling me to up north. He was schooling me, telling me what to do when I get up there, what not to do, what to stay away from, what to look out for. And he'll tell me shit like, yo, when you working out, if a dude's spotting you, never let him spot you from the back. Never let him come behind you and help you or whatever. He like... Never let a dude teach you how to hit the punching bag or whatever because they they sizing you up. Never let him teach you how to hit the punching bag. And he like, yo, stay away from gambling. Stay away from homosexual stuff. Stay away from uh, gangs, even though I was a gangbanger. Yeah. Like, stay away from gangs and shit like that, he would tell me. You know what I'm saying? And he like, yo, you'll be all right or whatever. He like, and if you're going to join any religion, man, take it serious because those brothers don't play about the religion and stuff up there. So he schooled me on things like that. You know what I'm saying? And... Funny story, when I went up, so I went to Ulster. I was in Ulster for maybe two weeks, week or two, maybe. And then they sent me to Green Correctional Facility. Now, when I got to Ulster, I told you, I'm like, prison, this is prison, this ain't shit. Yeah. When I got to Ulster, the facility looked exactly the same, but the activity was way different. Wow, that's crazy. When I got there... 
when I get there, at the time, Green Correctional Facility was a crip jail. It was dominated by crips. So I already knew I was going to be all right. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm not worried. I'm like, yeah, this is all the homeboys. I'm going to be all right, see the homeboys and shit, right? So when I get there, this one I knew it was serious, when I knew it was a serious jail. So we come off of the bus, and we in um, intake. We in intake where you come in, and you get your bed in, and you get all your, all your stuff, and then they take you to your dorm, your temporary dorm before you go to your permanent dorm. So when we get off the bus, it's like me, and it's maybe like six other guys, maybe like six or seven other guys. And out of them six or seven, it's like four bloods in there, right? And I know them because I was on Rikers Island with them, and I'm cool with them. Oh, wow, that's crazy. I know them. I don't got an issue with these dudes. Yeah. I know them. One of them I was actually like real cool with, real, real cool with. I was actually cool with. It was a dude named Troy, light-skinned dude, be singing and all that. He was nice, too, with the singing. And me and the dude was mad cool. You know what I'm saying? And we got there. The first thing the CEO said was, if you a blood, this jail ain't for you. Wow, he said. He said, if you a blood, I suggest you to sit on that bench over there. He said, it don't make you a punk. It don't make you a pussy. He said, just trust me. Sit over there. He said, he said last time, I, this is his, his, his exact words. He said, last time I gave this speech, the guys ain't listen to me. He said, and, um, 30 minutes later, the guy was back in here with his face cut wide open. It looked like a pussy. Oh, God, that's crazy. That was his words. So... I'm looking and I and I and I I know who's blood with me right now. Yeah. So I'm looking at them like nigga, go sit on the bench. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you don't gotta be tough, bro. I'm not yeah. gonna tell nobody. Yeah, facts. Yeah. I'm not word. gonna tell nobody. Yeah. I know y'all. We cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell nobody you went and sat on that bench. Just yeah. go, my man. Why put yourself through it? Go. Or whatever. So I'm looking at Troy, this is my boy, I told you. Like we was in we was in five main together for like a year. I'm looking at him, I'm like, yo, sit on the bench, bro. So he like he looking at me, but Troy, you know, he a real dude. He ain't no, he not a sucker. He not a troublemaker or nothing, but he a real dude. He look at me. He said, they used to call me insane. He like, yo, insane. You know I ain't going to sit on that bench. Because I gave him a look like, yeah. sit on the bench, nigga. Yeah, yeah. He like, you know I'm not sitting on that bench. And in my head, I'm like, fuck, man. This is my boy. I can't let them do him dirty. I'm going to have to hold him down. Yeah. Like, I'm going to see if I can speak to the homeboys and let yeah. him just rock. Let yeah. him chill. Cause, Cause he wasn't on that type of time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He wasn't no color banger either. Yeah. He was on some respect shit. If you're a man, treat me like a man, respect me like a man, and you ain't got no problem with yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, that's one of the reasons I fucked with him hard like that. So, but I'm looking at him like, please, man, just go get on the bench. He ain't go get on the bench. Like two dudes did go though. Like two, like two got up. Like yo, fuck that blood. I ain't going in there with them hard backs. Some niggas be wilder. Yeah. <laughs> so they go sit on the bench. So the other ones that didn't go on the bench, they oh, you so blood, you fool. Ah. Oh, they, they talking crazy, right? Yeah. Long story short, we go to the we go to the dorm, right? F one was the was the reception dorm. We go there, and then um, as I'm coming in, it's dudes going out, going to population. So it's just one big dude, man. This dude is big, man. This dude like six three, man. This dude like. 250 pounds, he must muscle. Yeah. Real black dude. He looked like black child from uh from from Murder Inc. Oh damn, okay. <laughs> he looked like but he but he brolic. Yeah. So this dude like he like, yo, he like, yo, watch, watch when I get out there. Yo, I'ma smash them hard back niggas. I, I, he, yo, he talking reckless, right? I'ma smash them hard backs. Boom. <laughs> he talking crazy, right? So I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, all right, fam. Yeah. Looking at him like I don't I don't know what to expect because I this I'm just getting there. Yeah. So I'm like, man, he tight big man. I feel sorry for the dude he run up on. Yeah. It's a big dude. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and he a grown man. He ain't like yeah. this dude look like he in like his thirties or whatever, like yeah. his late thirties. Like he's in the prime of his life type. Yeah, he look like he in his late thirties. Mind you, we teenagers. We 18, 19. I'm nineteen. I'm yeah. getting up there. This dude look like he like thirty seven, thirty eight, some you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, all right, bro. So he, so he, so I go, I clean up my cube or whatever little cube they give me. I go to sleep. My boy waking me up. Yo, wake up, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, yo, look, look, look. I'm like, look what? Why, why? He like, yo, CEO desk. Look. When I look back to the CEO desk, yo, Andrew, yo, bro. I kid you not, man. All my kids, bro. That same dude is at the CEO desk, lumped up, bro. Oh snap! They bro, got to him. Eye closed, lip yeah. busted. 
mouth bleeding. This dude is crying. This grown man is crying. Oh, wow. He like this. <laughs> he like, yo, they jumped me. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna kill him if I see them somewhere. Yo, I'm like, I'm like yo, <laughs> yo, yo, but they told you, man, because they put they, they make you sit in that seat so they could protect you, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm laughing to myself like, yo, it's real. I never, I, I just did a year and a half on Rikers Island. Yeah. I see this happen to the Crips. I don't yeah. see this happen to the Bloods. Yeah. So I see him come back like this. I'm like. I'm like, yo, it's real out there, bro. Yeah, for real. It's not playing, bro. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's real out there, bro. Yeah. So, most of you sure, I'm in, I'm in F1 for like four days, maybe. Yeah. And then they like, they like, Vega, pack up. I'm like, all right, where I'm going? They're like, yo, you going to L1, north side. I heard north side is wow. Yeah. But you know me, I told you, I'm, I'm Crip. Yeah. It's my jail. Yeah. It's all the homeboys. I'm yeah. good. I don't care. Yeah. I get to L. I get to L1. I'm putting all my stuff on the bed. I'm putting all my stuff in my in my, in my cube. I'm putting my stuff in. I see dudes watching me. People, they peeping. They looking. They looking. I go in the bathroom. and use the bathroom. I'm coming out the store. When I come out the store, it's like six dudes come out of nowhere. They're like, yo, what's cracking? I'm like, what's cracking? They're like, yo, you cuz? You cuz of blood. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, I'm cuz, nigga. What's cracking? Yeah. I'm like, I'm cuz, nigga. What's up? I, yeah. I do my little signs. Yeah. I throw it up or whatever. So they like, oh, say less, cuz. So they start introducing themselves. Yo, yeah. cuz, what you call? They yeah. start introducing themselves. We throw out, we spit our sets, whatever, whatever. Yeah. We do our, the whole shit. And then they like, oh, cuz, I heard of you. So I'm like, yo, you heard of me? Yeah. He's like, what you heard of me? <laughs> Like, yeah, I heard you was, put, you was putting in work on Rikers Island. I, I, yeah. I, I was doing my thing, but yeah. so you heard me say, like, yeah, I heard you, I heard you. It turns out, like, a couple of my boys I was with on Rikers Island had came up before me. Oh, okay. So I guess they, they was talking about me yeah. when I got up there. Yeah, yeah, I was down on Rikers Island with the cuz. Yeah. He going to be coming up soon. He just copped out, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. I hope he land over here, whatever. So when I got there, it was a warm welcome. Who creates you know? all that gang signs and all that stuff, man? Like, you know what I mean? It's something you create on your own or... Listen, man. Um, <laughs> What's the genesis of that, man? Because there's a whole verbiage. I can it's tell like you what situ- I. Yeah. I can tell you what I read. Yeah, <laughs> where the gang signs came from, like a dude in California named Michael Conception. I heard. Oh, okay, so that's like the origination of it. Okay. I heard that he originated it. I don't okay. know how true that is. Is it whatever. similar to the West Coast? Is it like something that you can that's universal, or, yeah. or or New York does it a little differently than over there in California compared to Chicago? It's, it's similar because it's similar because a lot of the New York a lot of the New York sets ninety nine percent of them is sets that originated in California. Okay. Is 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 dudes that like maybe a, a California dude came over here and then he turned some of the neighborhood kids crib and they joined his set or whatever and so a lot of the stuff he teaching them is what they did in California. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? So and they pick up a lot of their stuff. Uh, then you know and then but some dudes make up their own signs and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's individual to your set. Because, it, like, let's say if you sitting among somebody that you don't want them to know what you're talking about yeah. or whatever, you might you might, you might, might be a, 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 a rolling 60, you might be an a tray, and you don't want him to know what you're talking about or whatever, and y'all got your own lingo and your yeah. own slang and own codes. Your own jargon, yeah. Yeah, so you might, you know, and he don't know what you're talking about. So, like, some got their own stuff, you know, shit like that. Like we had some of our own slang and all that. We we got a lot of our own slang, a lot of our own um, hand signals and stuff like that that we did. You know what I'm saying? Because my 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 set wasn't from California. My set was from uh, Washington, from Lacey. Okay. My set was from Lacey. It wasn't from California. It originated in Lacey, and then they came over here. Now you're talking about Washington State or Washington D.C. Washington State. Got you. So my 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 set came from there. From Lacey Olympia, from that from that town, we not from California, you know, and we get a lot of pushback behind that too. Okay, because with a lot of the with a lot of the uh, gangs today, with the social media, with the social media era now, a lot of the the states are coming in contact with each other because you got Crips from California that's on social media, and the Crips from New York link up with them through social media, and you got them flying out to Cali. You got Cali flying out here and stuff like that, and they all cool now. So a lot of times they like so a lot of 
a lot of it is like now, like, oh, are you sanctioned? Did you get a sanction in California? How are you from uh, Washington and you're not from California? California is the motherland. That's where Crip started and this, that, that, and the third. And it's like, all right, that's where it started, but that's not where it ended. It didn't stop yeah. there. <laughs> it didn't stop there. It started there, yeah. Two teenagers started it in California and okay. it spread worldwide, you know? So if somebody tell you that they said originated in Washington or Detroit or something, that don't mean that you're not real, that you yeah. fake. It just mean that whoever <laughs> left yeah. California went to Detroit and started yeah. it over there, and the people left Detroit and they came over here and started it. It don't make it fake. It just that's just not what the origins of your set. That's wild. So man, you spent four years in prison, bro, and then you came home. You know, you, you came home. And uh, what was that transition like, man, coming home with, you know, what was going through your head there? Now you got to get your life together. You got a federal, you know, you got a, you're, you're a felon now. You're a former felon now. You know, like, was it hard to get work and things of that nature? Like, what was that life like afterwards? Yeah, when I, see, when I first came home off the first, because I did more than one bid. Oh, you had, you went back for, a, for another bid. That was actually my second bid. Okay. My first bid was in Pennsylvania. Okay. When I was 16 years old, I caught a drug case out there. Oh, okay. And I did uh, a year. I did six months in the county fighting the case. And then I did um, a six-month paramilitary program, shock, boot camp. Okay. I did that, and I came home. So the four years was my state bid, my first state bid, yeah. my first New York state bid. And, but when I came home... Let me backtrack a little bit. When I came home off the Pennsylvania case, I wasn't a felon because um, I was a minor, so yeah. my felony was sealed. But when I came home off of the, 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 the um, four-and-a-half-year bid for the shooting, and then I came home on parole and I was a felon. Yeah. And it was tough. Because, like, when I came out, you know, when you come to the street, like I mentioned before, my family's not rich. You know, my family don't got it like that. Now they doing a lot better than they was back then, yeah. you know. But back then, like, you know, they was finding their way as well. Like, a lot of my family, they was trying to do what they had to do, you know. So when I came home, I didn't come home to, like, a pot of gold. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't come home with to a, a, a lot. You know, my my sisters and um and my brother-in-law got, uh, thankfully, I had them in my life where they were able to, like, buy me clothes and things like that. Like, yeah. take me shopping, let me buy you some clothes give me a little bit of money to put in my pocket to, like, try to hold me over. And yeah. then I had some friends that, like, gave me some money because i always been a genuine dude. So when yeah. I came home, I had some friends. But trying to find a job, like, to employ my, keep myself employed was very hard because not only am I a felon, but I'm a violent felon. My charge is a violent felon, you know. They don't want to hire somebody who shot somebody because I, I don't know, maybe in their yeah, head they think be a felon drug dealer than a felon person yeah. that got a, you know, attempted murder charge. Maybe in their head they thinking, oh, if we piss some more, maybe he going to yeah, shoot yeah, us. Yeah, who yeah. knows? Yeah, I, mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's what a valid they thought, you know. <laughs> I don't know what they thinking, you know. They don't know, they don't know my situation yeah, and they don't know yeah. what caused me to be in there. Yeah, so man. I can understand like why they was so harsh, but it was hard, you know. When I first came home, I think the first job I got was I was looking through the newspaper for jobs. And they had those ads. Remember, uh, you probably seen them back in the days. Make up to $1,000 in a week. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, $1,000 yeah, cash. Was all over, yeah, that's a fact. It's all and over I'm the like, newspapers and stuff, all that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, shit, I could yeah. do that. $1,000 a week, I could yeah, do that. That's a fact. All right, let me get this paper. Let me get this number of call. Yeah. I get a number of call. They tell me to come in. I come in. I explain to them that, you know, I just came home. I got a felony. I, I was truthful. Everything. Yeah. You know, I was truthful. Everything. Because at this point, like, I wouldn't say that I'm all the way to the point where I'm ready to fully change my life. But I know I don't want to go back to prison yeah. right now. Yeah. I know I want to stay home. But I still want to be with the gang at this point. Yeah. You know? So at this point, because I come home, um, 22, 23 years old. I come home, I'm 23 years old. So I come home, I go there. I go there. When I get there, it's like, they're like, oh, so this is what we do. I'm like, all right, so what do we do? <laughs> we sell toys and books. You got to hustle if you want to make that $1,000 a week. So I'm like, 
This ain't no fucking real job. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't no like real a marketing pyramid scheme. Yeah, I'm like, this ain't yeah. no real job, man. Yeah. I'm like, but you know what? I don't want to depend on nobody. I don't want to go sell drugs. Yeah. I don't want to do any of that. So let me let me try this. So I go, I get the cart, I go out, I sell like Man, I sell like a third of the car, right? I sell like a third of the car. I probably make like two hundred dollars or something like that. It's like a thousand dollars worth of merchandise on the, yeah. the car. Uh, it, that wasn't even a third when you think about it. That's <laughs> crazy. So I, I sell like two hundred dollars worth of merchandise, and the whole time I'm like, "This is not for me. I, this is not for me." Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, mind you, I'm like, I'm like gang leader. I just get, yeah. I'm like. I'm praised in the streets, yeah. you know, like, yo, that's the home, that's yeah. the big homeboy. Yeah. yeah, that's the sig, he real. Uh, yeah. But I'm pulling this car and I'm walking into yeah. beauty salons and Kinda stores. Like doesn't match up to your uh, persona yeah. at that time. I'm know? walking into <laughs> beauty shops and stuff and I'm like, and, and I feel like a cornball because I'm like, hey, did you get yours today? They're like, did I get what? Bad attitude. <laughs> did I get what? <laughs> like, look, I start showing them product. No soliciting. Get out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to make some money. Get out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. I got a lot of that. You walking up to people on the street, hey, would you like to buy it? No. I'm like, I'm yeah. like man, I'm not, I can't do this. Yeah, it's, it's, I did it for like three days maybe. That's a fact. That's and a I was fact. like, nah, I'm done. So then I went to a, I went to a temp agency, and they put me in like some factory up in, um, like up, up towards White Plains, New York. Okay. And I'm doing... um. Maybelline products. Ma- making Maybelline products. Now. Not making them, packaging, packaging them. Packaging them, okay. Packaging Maybelline products and stuff like that. I'm packaging them. And then it's like... Man was like, maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, I, I'm wow. com- like, I come home from work. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. I go home. I go to sleep. I might have the day off. The next day I come outside. My boy is like, yo, cuz... You missed it, bro. Yo, we was doing such and such. We had such and such, shorty. In. Yo, such and such was asking for you. Yo, where you was at? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yo, I'm missing all the fun. Yeah. I'm missing all the fun with this whack job, man. Yeah. In my head, I'm like, yo, I could sell crack. I could be on a block. Yeah. And I could get all the fun and still get money. Oh, Jesus. And man, this, is, this is my thought process at yeah. the time. And then I had the, the that that was the devil. Then the angel on my shoulder was like, you better not, you asshole. Yeah. You better go to work. So I stuck with it. I went to work. All right. I mean, that's good, man. I stuck with it. And then um, the girl I was dealing with at the time, her mom had got me a job in this private oil company up by Terrytown, New York. Okay. And it was sweet. It was a sweet job. The trucks are com- the trucks are coming in the morning. I give them their buckets with the supplies they're gonna need on the truck. They take the supplies. They give me their empty bucket that they from the day before. I clean the empty bucket out. I clean out all the empty buckets. I restock them for the next morning, and then I clean up the warehouse part. And then after that, I sit down, kick my feet up, and chill until like three o'clock, and then I go home. You That's know? crazy. And you know, I, I also want to, you know. I- really highlight what you are doing now. We're not going to name the company, but it's great because right now you've gone through all this stuff, you know, you're, you're reform, uh, reforming your life, and now you start working at, at a place where you're helping fellow uh, uh, ex uh, criminals that are coming home trying to get adjusted to everyday life, and you're in a and you know you're in a company like that where you help them, you know, get their stuff together, and you know, d- and see them, you know, and you give them advice, and you yeah. know, you're just in a position to help them and, and see that you know this doesn't have to be the way that you're looked at for all of your life. You know what I'm saying? And you know, how do you feel doing that now, man? Man, I love it, man. Like, like I love I love what I do at my job. I'll give the company because maybe some people who will watch this can go to the company and actually, uh, like, if you're just coming home and you're watching this and you need employment and you want to be employed, CEO, Center for Employment Opportunity, you can go there and we help you out. Cool. We'll put you to work. You'll work three to four days a week. You make ninety something dollars a day. It's uh, it's tax, so you get to file taxes at the end of the year, and they also help you get um permanent employment 
Oh, that's great. And that's important, filing taxes, because then you can get health insurance and other things of that nature, yeah. you know, because they're not going to give you those kind of services if you don't have to. If you're not filing taxes, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Mm. Well, thank you for giving us that information. So, yes, yeah, CEO, mm. you know, you work for them. And, you know, I, I, you know that's what, how I met Vega. We were both working at that location downtown. And, uh, you know, I would see what you would do. You would give these guys great advice, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of them will be, you know, a lost souls. Unfortunately, there was that time where that guy robbed the security. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that you was know? crazy. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? So, yeah, one time, you know, uh, I was, you know, Vega and I were working. I worked at a different department. He worked for the CEO. CEO, and uh, there was a gentleman who robbed uh, the, the uh, sec- one of the security guards' lockers that was there, and you made him give himself up with the, the ultimate Jedi mind trick. That was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was trying to help him, bro. Yeah. Honestly, like, I, I, I was trying to help him because I knew when they checked them cameras and you get caught on them yeah. cameras, it was like, it was, it was over for you. So I just tried to tell him, like, yo, listen, man, if you did it, you know, I can't blame you for anything because I didn't see you take anything. Yeah. But if you did do it and you know you did it, I suggest like you just come forward, give it, give me the money back and stuff. Let me give it back to them, and then hopefully they won't call the cops on you. Or yeah. Whatever. Because and, a lot of those guys are still like they still have go with parole. I mean, probation yeah, and parole, yeah, right? Yeah, the majority of them are on parole. Okay. So I try to I try to help them. I try to tell them like, yo, listen, you know, if they check those cameras and they see your face on them cameras. You know they're going to call your parole officer. They're going to call the cops in here. All this stuff is going to go down, and you're going to get arrested. Like, yeah. So, like, if you're trying to avoid all that, just, like, you know what I'm saying? Just give it to me, and I'll talk to them or whatever. He did. He gave it back and all that, but unfortunately, they didn't want to hear that. Like, yeah, like, no. Yeah. The, the, the damage was done already, man. Yeah, they they, they didn't want to hear that, and, they, and he got locked up. He he. He did a little bit of time, but I believe he's out now. I believe he well, got out. I mean, out. hopefully he stays on the right track, and you know, yeah. for you know, for those guys, you're giving them a second chance, man. You know, to to to, to you know, like just that stopgap to try to progress in life, man. You got to take advantage of that, man, because you don't want to go back over there, man. It's not a fun place, like you said. Yeah, because I try, I try to tell, I try to talk to them, you know, because like you know, I'm telling my story now, right? And it, as y'all following along, you get you picked up that I'm, I'm a former gangbanger, you know. And um, I've been through the prison system, and I've been through everything that they're going through, you know. I've been through uh, not having anything, no money, anything, and you don't know where your next meal is going to come from because you don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you don't want to go to jail. You want to stay on the right path because you don't want to go back to jail. So you're you trying to do the right thing. and But sometimes, like, you get to those points in your life where you 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 feel like, man, F all this. Let me go back to what I know. Because, like, how can you tell a guy that was bef- went to jail and before he went to jail, he was making five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a week, you know, doing whatever he do, whether it's selling drugs, whether it's robbing, whether it's scamming or whatever he was doing. He was making $10,000 a week or more, maybe some, some people or whatever. And then you come home and you, like, you want to do the right thing because you don't want to go back, but you're not making nothing. Or if you are making something, you're making $500 a week. And it's not covering with your lifestyle that you're accustomed to. So what do you do at that point? See, a lot of people, some people fall victim and they be like, man, screw this. I'm going to go back to what I know. Yeah. And they go back to what they what they know and they do what they do. And then you you put yourself in a predicament where you're going to either risk going back to jail or it may possibly even getting killed in the streets, you know? So I try to, when I, when I, when I work with my guys, I try to explain to them, like, listen, I understand what you're going through because I've been through it. I used to sell drugs before I went to jail. And I used to make decent money selling drugs. And I lived a decent lifestyle from selling drugs. And when I came home, I have nothing. And 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 yes, it's those points in my life where I, I felt, well, back then, not anymore, but back then where I felt like, man, screw it. Let me just go back to doing what I know and let me make this money. But then, you know, I had to remind myself, like, you want to go back to jail? Perhaps. That's what you want? Yeah. You want to go back to jail? You want to end up dead? Like, is this the lifestyle that you really want? And I had to realize, like, that that's not what I want. I don't want that for myself. So let me stay focused. Let me stay on the right track. Um, I didn't get to when um, I did the first four and a half years, and um, I told you I was working in a private oil company, and I was doing and I was doing all right there. 
man, if you would have seen me, you would have thought I was selling drugs the way I was looking because I was getting like $900 a week. And back then I didn't have no real responsibilities. Yeah. I didn't have any bills. I didn't have any kids. I didn't have nothing to like, I didn't have uh, no responsibility. It was just me just taking care of me. So with that money, you know, every time I got paid, I went and spent like out of that seven, eight hundred dollars I made, I spent like four or five hundred dollars on clothes. You know what I'm saying? I'll buy jewelry yeah. and stuff like that. So just to look fly, you know, you yeah, want to look fly. Look you fly. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, you yeah, went through a lot. You were a kid. You missed yeah. out basically, you know, your your late teen, early 20s. You know, you were in the, you know, you were in the can for that time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you want to like experience that life. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? You know, so so I would dress. I, I had, man, 30, 40 pair of sneakers in my room, you know, like whatever I wanted, you know, and then I end up losing that job. Because um, Mother's Day, Mother's Day of 2005, I was supposed to go meet up with a girl I was with at the time. She was she had a kid from a prior relationship. She had a kid. I was supposed to meet up with her and take her out for Mother's Day and do some do something for her. You know what I'm saying? Make her feel special. Yeah. She was my girlfriend at the time. And I'm at the bus stop waiting for the bus or whatever. And I could have gotten a cab because I had money, but... I was being cheap. I'm like, yeah. you know, it's a 10 minute bus ride or whatever. Let me just get on the bus. You know what I'm saying? Save some money yeah. or whatever. But so I'm at the bus stop. I got a, a Jesus piece on that was iced out. Like not no quality stones, but iced out Jesus piece, nice Cuban link on. Yeah. And I'm at the bus stop and me and this girl's on the phone. Cause I'm telling her I'm about to come. Um, I'll be there in a little while. I was running a little late because I was with my brother hanging out before. Yeah. I was I was running a little late, so she had a little attitude about that or whatever. Like, oh, we're that beefing, you know how that go. Yeah. Or whatever. And I'm talking to her and we beefing over the we beefing back and forth, arguing. This when the A sixty next sales just came out. Yeah, ooh, it was a nice the chirp. Ooh, yeah, nice. the blue and black joints. <laughs> Hell yeah. So we beefing a little bit and, and I got my head down, I'm talking to her, and I see like some feet step in front of me and, and I hear somebody say something, but I don't really catch it because I'm arguing with her. But I know it was something slick. So when I popped my head up, I'm like, what? I'm like, what? And when I popped my head up, I didn't even see a guy that was behind me bust me in my face with an uh, Alizé bottle. Oh, shit. Bust me inside of my face with an Alizé bottle. I, I fell on one knee, like, you know, and then the other dude kicks me in my face, boom, kicks me in my face, and, like, uh, boom, my head hits the, the bus stop glass. And, like, man, these dudes is, like, going to town on me, bro. Like, they, like, they stomping me, they kick me, they beat me with the bottle. Or whatever, they're trying to get my chain off my neck. They're trying to rob me. So they're like, yo, get the chain. I hear them saying, get the chain. And they're pulling the chain. But while they're pulling the chain, it's choking me because I had the double lock on it. Yeah. So it's not popping. It's a, it's a nice thick Cuban. It's not yeah. popping. So they they pulling it. It's choking, it's choking the, the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I feel like I'm going in and out. I feel like I'm going in and out. And I hear them like, yo, get the phone. They're trying to get the phone. I slide the phone in my pocket and they start going harder. Like, yo, give me the phone. Or whatever. And God bless the dad, man. My Uncle Popo, man. God bless the dad. I remember he used to always tell me something when I was a kid. He used to always be like, yo, if you get in jump, make sure you get one. Yeah. So, like, I swear to God, like, I seen his face at that very moment. Yo, yeah. it's, yo I'm feeling it, bro. Oh, yeah, that's okay, Uncle Popo. So, I had an Uncle Popo, too. A Puerto Rican cat? Puerto Rican. <laughs> straight Puerto Rican. So, I see. So, I hear my Uncle, I hear my Uncle Popo's voice yeah. in my head because, like, I feel like these dudes is about to kill me, bro. Yeah. So I hear my uncle Popo's voice in my head, like, "Yo, get one of them, get one, like get one." So I'm like, I'm like, "Yo, I." Right. So I grab the chain from this end, and I'm pulling, and I'm pulling while they're pulling, and it finally pop. But now I got it in my hand. So now they beating on me, they jumping me, they beating. Me. So I, I like get up, like rush one of them on my shoulder, start fighting back, start fighting back. I'm trying to fight both of them, but like. I'm getting tired, like, trying to fight both of them. And then I hear his voice again, get one, right? So I get one, man. I I, I ain't even going to tell you what I did yeah. with him, man. Yeah. But I get him, and then, so now he's down, right? He, he's down. And I'm not glorifying him. I'm just telling you some yeah. shit, man. He's down or whatever, and I'm fighting the other one now. And in the midst of fighting him, I hear a gun. Cock, cock, cock. Oh, shit. So I'm like, oh, shit, man. These dudes are going to shoot me, man. Yeah. And then... Like when I at the same time I'm having that thought, I feel some my body get lifted off the ground and like I see the sky and then I see the ground real fast. Boom. I go down, but I realize it's police. Oh. 
It was police. They happened to be driving by. This happened on Fordham Road right in front of the Metro North. Oh, I right, Fordham and Webster yeah. in front of the nine bus. Okay. This happened right there. So they handcuffing all of us on the now they got all of us on the floor. They handcuffing us. But it's mind you, is this is like four or five o'clock in the evening. Yeah. It's mad people at the bus stop. So the people was like, No, 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 not him, not him. It's them too. They was jumping him, they was robbing him. Or whatever. So they picked me up. Pick me up. My chain is on the floor. I go reach for my chain. They snatch it. The police. They say, nah, this is evidence. So they say, what happened? I say, I don't know. So they said, what you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know. I was at the bus stop and I don't know. They said, they said, so these two jumped you? I said, I don't know. I didn't see who hit me. Yeah. There's mad people at the bus stop. I don't know who hit me. Yeah. Everybody is like, it was them two. It was them two. So long story short, they like, yo, yo, call an ambulance. I'm like, I don't need no ambulance. Just let me go home. Yeah. I'm good. They like, yo, dude, your chin is hanging off. So I'm like, what do you mean my chin is hanging off? I don't know if you can see it. You see the scar right there. That's crazy. He they stabbed me in the midst of the um oh, in the midst of the shit. fight. And you didn't even realize it because the adrenaline the was. The adrenaline, kidding, yeah. I didn't realize it. Wow. And then my shirt felt wet. So when I looked down, I'm thinking it's sweat. When I looked down, my whole shirt is red. Yeah. I had a a a, a, a gray uh I had a gray champion hoodie on. Yeah. My whole hoodie is red. So I'm like, yo, what the f I touch my chin, I can feel the bone. I'm like, oh. No so we sure. They took me to the hospital. Yeah. Stitched took me you to up. the hospital. Yeah. Stitched me up. My face was like this, like elephant man. Wow. My face was swollen. I didn't tell you, but like a month before then, I had got that's how I got this. I had crashed on okay. my dirt bike. Okay. And I got this. So now the trauma, I wasn't fully healed from that. So from that trauma, my, my head was, like, full of pus, like, big. And I couldn't go to work. Oh, man. So I end up losing my job at the um, oh, sucks. At the private oil company. Yeah. I end up losing my job. I end up losing my job behind that because I couldn't go back to work or whatever. And then when I finally healed, like, my position was filled already. Yeah. They needed because that's a demanding position. They needed it. It was filled. So it was like, yo, go get your license and we'll put you on one of our smaller trucks. Yeah. And you can uh, deliver barrels and stuff. But my PO didn't want to allow me to get my license. Damn, that's fucked up. My PO was like, nah, you can't drive. So I'm like, yo, it's for a job. Like, I'm not trying yeah. to, I don't even have a car. Yeah. It's for a job. Like, let me get the, the license. They wasn't trying to hear it. So I ended up losing that opportunity. So, like, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I don't want to go back to, doing dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just trying, like, I'm looking for a job, and I mean, like, man, it's bad. Like, I'm not getting no job nowhere. And a friend of mine, he was doing this thing in the streets, and he like, yo, he'll give me, like, a little 200 here, a little 200 there, and he like, yo, listen, yo, just keep looking, just keep looking. And I used to tell him, like, yo, take me out of state with you. Yeah. Take me out of state with you, man. Let me make my own money. I'm like, yo, I appreciate it, but I don't want no handouts. Yeah. At this point, I'm like, whatever, man. I just need to make money. You're trying to survive. Yeah. So I'm like, he like, nah. He kept telling me no. And then I'm like, yo, I insisted. Like, yo, you going to take me, bro. Yeah. Like, I, ain't, I ain't asking no more. You're going to take me, bro. <laughs> like, I'm the big homie, nigga. You're going to take me. You have to roar, you know? <laughs> so he like, <laughs> he, like know. he like, you know what? He like, yo, he laugh. Yeah. He ain't take me serious. He like, you know, yeah. he's a smart man. Yeah. He take me, so he laugh. He like, yo, you really trying to go? I right, I'm take you. He took me out there with him. Start doing my thing. I'm getting a little money out there. I'm getting a little money. I'm doing my thing. I'm like, like, all right. I'm feeling good about myself. Doing my thing. I keep telling myself that I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a certain amount of money. Yeah. And then and I'm, gonna, and then I'm gonna stop. Yeah. I'm gonna stop. And this will hold me down while I'm looking for a job. Yeah. But when you greedy. <sighs> You start doing numbers in your head, yeah, yo. Yeah. If I if I buy fifty grams, yeah. I can make it. Yeah, twelve. So you got 000. caught up in that game. Happy. Yeah. Damn. So I got caught up in that. So I so I, I continue going back and forth out of town. I got set up by a crackhead out there. She set me and like five of my friends up. Mm -hmm. Cases on all of us. Seal indictments. We got locked up for that. I ended up doing two and a half years for that. I came home. After I did those two and a half years, though, I knew for sure that I was done with the street life. Yeah. I knew for sure. It was nothing that was going to send me back to jail. I'll be a bum before I go back. I knew for sure. I hit my breaking point. I'm not going back to jail. This is not the lifestyle I want. 
I don't, I don't want it. I'm done. Well, that's a great message to give people, man. Like, you know, you you know, you know, did it, then you went back again because you didn't make a smart choice. So, you know, I'm glad that you're here telling people, like, you know what, sometimes it's better to be a bum-ass dude on the street, you know, asking for help than, you know, losing your freedom, man. You know what I'm saying? Creating more problems behind that. You it's know? definitely, man, because, you know, I, I, I think I told you this before, the way I look at life, right? They, mm -hmm. say, they say that our life expectancy is like what 70 something 75 yeah. something like that mm -hmm. right and the way i was looking at it then and i still look at it this way is if my life expectancy is 75 right and i'm just throwing numbers right now because i don't know the actual life expectancy yeah right? but if my life expectancy is 75 if i'm expected to die in my 70s right and i'm already 30 i have 40 years left on this earth right why would I want to waste any of those years in a prison cell? Nah, we're not doing that. Why? Yeah. 30 years will fly by in the blink of an eye. 40 years will fly by in the blink of an eye before you know it. So I always told myself, I'm not going back. I'm not. It's done. That's a great message to give people. Don't, you know, you got to really yeah. instill that in your head, man. And I tell this to, 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 to my guys at the yeah. job when I, when I, when I, when I have little talks with them and stuff. And mm -hmm. I tell them like, yo, you, do you really want to waste your life? Cause I got dudes that I be getting dudes that just came home from doing 30 and 40 years. Yeah. Some of them, they don't even know how to work a smartphone. I got to teach them oh, right wow. there, you know? And when you see it, it's like some of these dudes was put away young. Like they were young. They're babies. Yeah. You know, and they come home, they, they, they old men now, you know? And I, and I, and I look at that and I say, I, I don't want to be that dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't be that dude. So when I came home from the second bid, I knew for a fact that it was nothing that was going to send me back to jail. Well, that's good, man. I mean, that's great that you were able to gain that perspective and actually that's stick right. to your guns. What happened? You went back? I went back to jail. Oh, my Lord, man. <laughs> but this time, but this time, this time it was really something yeah. that was like yeah. out of my control. Yeah. It wasn't nothing that I did that, that forced me to. I mean, it was my actions, but I was forced, like. Basically, uh, uh, the female I was dealing with at the time, she had a child. The child father comes over. The child had an a asthma attack. We took him to the uh, hospital. And when we came back from the hospital, he pops up, like, in the middle of the night type shit. Mm -hmm. He pops up or whatever, and he's, like, all irate. He's talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? He's talking crazy. Yo... He just talking crazy. He in the living room going ham on her. And I call her. You know, that's their business. I don't want to get involved. involved. Yeah. So I call her into the room and I tell her, yo, listen, it's time for him to go home. Tell him he got to go. Yeah. It's late. Kid is asleep. Yeah. You got to go to work. I got to go to work. It's time for him to go home. Yeah. So she tells him, yo, you got to leave. Yo, I'm not going nowhere. So I tell him. I said, and I try to keep it as respectful as possible. I say, yo, listen, bro. Man to man, please, bro, if you're going to come here, call before you come. Come at a reasonable hour, too. That's all I'm going to ask you. I say, and please, when you come here, don't disrespect my lady in front of me, bro. Like I said, I never get involved with y'all business, but please, bro. Yo, dude was like, I don't know if he took my soft tone, my kind of mm, yeah. my weakness. He like, yo... Fuck out of here. Yeah. Oh, Who you? This my baby mom's house. Yeah. Would you pay a phone bill or a light bill? Would you pay cable? This ain't your crib. You can't tell me nothing. Blah, 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 blah. He's going in. I'm like, yo, listen, uh -oh. man. I'm like, listen. Just leave, bro. Yeah. So let me ask you, leave. So he start unbuttoning his jacket. What? I take that as a sign of uh, aggression. A sign of aggression. I take that as a threat. Yep. I put hands on him, bro. Yeah. Real quick. And easy, easy, fast, easy. Fight was done, not even a minute. Boom, 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 over. You, you have a lot of experience in fights, man. <laughs> boom, 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 fight was like, over, right? It's like a one-on-one, -on -one, finally. You got to have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> fight was over. I tell him, yo, listen, man, now leave. Yeah. I tell him, now, leave. now walk out or I'm going to throw you out. So he leaves, he calls the cops. Oh, and he press charges on you and you go calls down for that because you already have a record and they come, that's some bullshit, they man. They lock me up. I end up doing six months. I did three months going back and forth to, uh, they end up dropping the, the charges. It was an assault third okay. fight. 
not it was a misdemeanor. So the, yeah. so they end up dropping it, but I'm now I'm on parole. Yeah. So I get a parole violation. So I'm going back and forth, parole violation. And then they like, yo, 90 days will it, paramilitary. Oh, God. So I go do that. So when I come home, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I can't believe I even went back for that. Like, I'm like, definitely not going back. I know I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm done. Right. Wow. So I said, so I'm got to give. So me and that girl end up uh, parting ways. I get what, who's my wife now. I get with my wife now. We talk talk about what we want out of life she told me what she wanted i told her what i wanted we looking for the same things i know my wife my whole life you know what i'm saying and we click man we That's, click it's a beautiful thing man it's a beautiful we, story bro i mean it's it's vindication is bad bro you've been through it you've been through the muck man like you've been through a lot of yeah. shit you know what i mean overcome a lot yeah. of shit i'm glad that you're able to you know express that to us man because yeah. you know it's important to know that and you Definitely. know what time it is now brother Definitely. it's time for five words with angel on five words with angel man i'm gonna give you a word or phrase or question you're gonna give me the first thought that comes to your mind are you ready my brother you know how it is it's your third one you know (laughs) all right man the first phrase is judas and the messiah legendary nice nice legendary uh second is a phrase your favorite well question your favorite prison snack (laughs) Chi Chi. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> it's a cup of soup crushed up with Andy Cab hot fries, a uh, Slim Jim burnt and cut up, all mixed together with hot 180 water, all mixed together. I'm about to try that, man. That sounds crazy. It's delicious. <laughs> Delicioso. Delicioso. It's delicioso. <laughs> All right, Vega. Uh, not a serious question. Your masturbation in prison over under twice a day. Hey, yo! <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to answer any question that's going to incriminate me. Nah, let me stop, let me stop. Yo, yeah. I ain't going to answer that one. I got you. It's all right. You don't need to. <laughs> Uh, the fourth one is uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, that's a classic. Nice, nice, nice. And the fifth uh, is a word, the color blue. What do you think about when you think the color blue? Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Oh, man, Didi Vega was a pleasure, brother. Thank you so much. And, you know, could you just give one more message to the public? Where to find you? You know, if any, you know there's any, anybody looking for help, you know, and you may have some, you know, advice for them where we can find you and a little message out there for the people, man, that are, you know, that have, that have gone through these ordeals and are dealing with them now, man. What would you tell them? I tell them this, right? I don't not, I don't denounce gangs. I don't denounce because... That's a personal choice for whoever wants to do it. But I'll say this. Um, for me, like, I think that is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know, I think there's a lot more out there in life that these young kids should strive for other than being in the game, you know. Do something positive with yourself. Go to school. Go to college. Get your education. Get your nice career. Start your business or something. Stay away from the gangs. And just, man, live your life, man. Just live your life. Got you, man. And at Third World Didi, right? We want, they want to look Yeah, out. and my, my Instagram is at Third World Didi. That's 3RD World. You can spell that. Underscore D D D. I said, figure it out. We'll scroll it underneath here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was uh, Didi Vega here on the Angel of Words podcast. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to uh, smash that like button. You know, follow us on Facebook uh, and everywhere else. Uh, all the social medias at, at Angel of Words ENT. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll talk to you later. <laughs>